Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kaipet Labs. In today's video we're going to go through the concept of speedy calculations. Okay, so looking at how we can use the, con the, the formula or the concept of speed equals distance over time in whatever um, form that we need um, to be able to perform um, calculations in physics. Okay, so remember in the previous video we introduced this formula of, that an object's speed is it the distance that it travels in metres, typically, over the time taken in seconds. And that gives us units of speed in metres per second. Now, we can often measure speed in other units, you know, so if you're learning to drive, you know, your, your speedometer that measures the speed of your car does not give you values in metres per second, but it gives you values in kilometres per hour. So in which case you'd be talking about how many kilometres that you would be travelling in however many hours that you are driving. Okay, and then, you know, if you go to America, then they'd be measuring it in miles per hour, because apparently they're too good for the metric system. But there's the same sort of idea that relating an object, the distance it travels over the time that it takes. Okay, and then in, in that video, then we also looked at this idea that we can rearrange this formula as we need to, to get either distance equals speed times time. Okay, or we can even make it to be time equals distance divided by speed. Okay, so depending on which thing that we need if we, to calculate, if we're trying to calculate speed, we're trying to calculate distance, or trying to calculate time, we would use one of these versions of our formula. Okay, and then we're going to do a simple, straightforward substitution. I realise that some, for some of you that even the, the concept alone, you know, mentioning about doing a substitution or doing calculations sends shivers down your spine, but trust me, go through this, you'll find it works out really quite straightforward, okay? So, so just take a deep breath and, and let's get into it. We'll do a couple of practice calculations to show you how it works. Okay, so if we have an object that um, has a speed of 2 metres per second and travels a distance of 10 metres, then we want to know, all right, well, how long, what time would that take? Okay, so because the time is the thing that we want to try and find, we're going to use version 3 of our formula. So we're going to look at time equals distance over speed, okay, and, you know, we could abbreviate it, and I will for the other examples of t equals d over s, distance over speed, okay, so we've got 10 metres divided by 2 metres per second gives us a time of 5 seconds. So where I was told the distance, I put in my distance. Where I was told the speed, I substitute in my speed. And then I've got a, a fraction that I can calculate. Okay, if you're really not confident, you can do that in your calculator. But hopefully you could do 10 divided by 2 in your head at this point. Okay, you are year 10. Okay, but if you're not confident or if you just want to, you know, if you, if you need that reassurance, then please continue to use your calculator. Okay, so then the next one is saying, all right, if we travel a distance of 25 metres in a time of 5 seconds, what is our speed? Okay, so looking at our three formulas, the one that has speed equals something is version number 1. Okay, so speed equals distance divided by time, and then for my distance I substitute in my value of distance, for my time I substitute in my value of time, okay, and I can, now I do 25 divided by 5, gives me a speed of 5 metres per second. Okay, again, hopefully you could do 25 divided by 5 with, with confidence in your head, um, but you could calculate it if you wanted to, to be certain. Okay, so now let's look at, um, like I was saying, that we can express speed and things in some different units. Okay, so let's look at our cyclist who travels a distance of 20 kilometres in a time of 4 hours. Okay, and then trying to work out, okay, well, what's our speed? The cyclist's speed. Okay, so we've got formulas 1, 2, and 3. Just like in the previous example, speed is the thing we're trying to find. So version 1 is what we will use. Speed equals distance over time equals 20 kilometres divided by a time of 4 hours gives us 5 kilometres per hour. Okay, so which is faster than walking pace. You know, your average walking pace is 4 kilometres per hour. So there you go. That's just a little interesting fact for you. Okay. But so we identified the formula, we substituted the values in that we were given, and then we did the calculation, and we end up with an answer. And 
there we go. Okay, so now let's let's look at kind of the last question we're going to do here of this idea of looking at Usain Bolt. Okay, so Usain Bolt, for his world record, travelled a distance of 100 metres in a time of 9.58 seconds. And then wanting to work out, all right, well, what is what is his average speed? Okay, so just like before, we're going to use version 1. Speed equals distance over time equals 100 metres divided by 9.58 seconds, which equals, that equals 10.44 metres per second. Or if we want to use some of the language that we were introducing last time, this idea that for every second that he runs, he travels 10.44 metres, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about it. Um, you know, that's the equivalent of a three-storey building um, at, in every second that he runs. It's incredibly fast. Okay, now obviously this is one that you can't calculate in your head with any confidence. Okay, so this is where a calculator would come in handy. I did it for this one as well. Okay, so that's perfectly reasonable to do. Alright, so what you've seen is that we we can use this formula in whichever version that we need to find the thing that we're after. We substitute in information that we're given and then we can solve to find our answer. Okay, you keep going with the practice, the rest of the practice questions. Good luck, thanks very much for watching, bye for now.